everybody, my lovely, lovely imps, on my channel, I often talk about the, uh, the right, the political right. Um, and the political right is, to be completely forward and honest with you, my abject enemies. The political right has, through all of history, act repre acted repressive towards people of color, towards Jewish people, towards queer people, specifically trans and gay people. Um, and the political right is having what we might say is a bit of a upsurge uh, uh, locally. They took a lot of losses over the last couple of decades, the globally, I mean. The political right suffered some major, major political losses. Let's talk about some of those political losses. Um, the, the legalization of gay marriage was one of the biggest losses that the far right took in recent memory. Uh, the introduction of Obamacare, uh, which ruled out draconian laws uh, such as pre-existing conditions. Uh, for those of you who are not American, pre-existing conditions uh, was a, a part of American healthcare law that allowed insurance companies to decline to cover you for anything if you had certain conditions that they determined were pre-existing. So basically, if you are born uh, disabled, if you were born with diabetes, if you were born with leukemia, if you were trans, interestingly, I bet you didn't know that, being diagnosed uh, with gender dysphoria used to be a pre-existing condition that would mean that you would no longer be able to get healthcare coverage. Uh, uh, certain types of injuries could be considered pre-existing conditions. Certain types of genetic disorders could be considered pre-existing conditions. Now, if that sounds like an almost medieval policy to have, that's because it was. Obamacare, for all of its flaws, erased that. Uh, it, it is very, it was, it, so, so that was a big loss for the political right. And by the way, when I say that was a loss for the political right, pre-existing conditions were upheld by the right for so long that Donald Trump said that he was going to bring them back. That's right, the guy who was just in power said originally that one of his goals while president was to bring back pre-existing conditions, a thing that the rest of the world looks at and goes, oh my God. So what I'm trying to say is that the far right uh, all across the world, but especially in America, has taken, some, has taken some hard hits and they're very angry about it. Now, what this is resulting in is what it always results in, which is that the far right resorts to abject, open violence. And some people here, maybe centrists or maybe even some right wingers who are listening, are going to go and they're going to say, that's so, that's so partisan, demon mama. What do you mean? The far right doesn't believe in democracy. That's part of what makes them the far right. The far right believes explicitly the, the belief systems that are categorized as right-wing belief systems believe that hierarchy, physical, legal, spiritual, emotional hierarchy is natural. That, it, that there are some people who are supposed to be over others, whether it's because of merit, whether it's because God said so, or whether it's because of race. Uh, they believe all of these ideologies are united by the fact that they believe that hierarchy is natural. They do not believe in a system in which every person has a say in the leadership of their lives. That is fundamental to right-wing belief. And that's why I say that the right are fundamentally my political opponents. And also why I say that they always end up resorting to violence. Because as it turns out, um, if democratically people reject your ideology they reject your god if you're a christian they reject your race science if you're a white nationalist they reject your meritocracy if you're a hardline uh, corporatist right winger um when they do that what are you supposed to do about it well if the people are rejecting it well then you need to put the people back in your place and every single far right ideology comes to this conclusion at some point or another and as if as if I couldn't drive the point any harder home, today we are going to be talking about a couple of instances, very, very recent, in fact, literally yesterday, instances of far-right violence and attempts to overthrow 
legitimately elected governments. Now, everybody here who watches my show knows that I uh, am very, very critical of state power. I think that it's absolutely essential if you wish to have a, a full political ideology to be very critical of state power, no matter who you are, unless you are explicitly a fascist and you believe that the state should be supreme, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I am very critical of state power. And, uh, and so I want to be clear that when I talk about coups, when I talk about, uh, attempted dissolutions of the constitution, when I talk about, uh, these sort of things, I'm not saying that because I'm super, super a fan of state entities. I'm saying it because these people want to overthrow the currently existing system in order to turn it generally into something significantly more authoritarian and more repressive. For example, Donald Trump claiming completely falsely with no evidence whatsoever that there was an election fraud. His desire is to take personal control of the entirety of America against the wishes of its people. And he seeks to do so by dissolving the power of the state. Today, or at least I should say first today, we are not talking about America though. We are talking about Germany. This is a report from NPR that was published this morning, uh, or sorry, this, this afternoon, at uh at at 12 noon okay germany says that it has now foiled a far-right coup plot here's what we know so far let's listen in shall we the far-right coup plotters had mapped down their own government with people chosen for cabinet-like roles if they succeeded in overthrowing germany's elected leaders that's one of the revelations shared by German officials this Wednesday in an update on what they say was a foiled conspiracy by a massive anti-terrorism operation. 25 people at least are under arrest, including 22 suspected members of a terrorist organization. Public Prosecutor General Peter Frank said in a brief news conference, the conspiracy's goal, Frank said, was to overturn the existing state order in Germany based on democracy, using violence, and to replace it with their, with, with their own state, according to a translation by Deutsche Welle. As it details emerge about the alleged coup, here's what we know so far. Has the arrest number gone up? I would not be surprised if that has gone up. Now, some of you might immediately go, wait a minute, doesn't this sound like exactly what Hitler did? And the answer is yes, because far right groups do not believe that, that people have a say in who rules them. They believe that hierarchy is natural and that hierarchy needs to be enforced with force. See where this is all clicking together now? Let's continue. The organization formed around Prince Heinrich the 13th. The people arrested embraced a fantasy based on conspiracy theories and were united by a hatred of democracy, Interior Minister Nancy Frazier said. Officials say that the suspects include members of several far-right extreme extremist groups and QAnon followers. We've talked about QAnon and the dreadful effects of the QAnon conspiracy theory very frequently on this show. It's no surprise that the QAnon conspiracy theory, a con an explicitly far-right conspiracy theory that constantly alleges that there are shadow, there's a shadowy group of people who are controlling the government look to overthrow the government by violence. People who ad adhere to the Reichsburger or the Reich citizens movement, which holds that Germany's current constitution is invalid. That's just Nazi shit. The group of conspiracists coalesced as early as November 2021, Frank said, uniting over their support for a Prince Heinrich the 13th, a 71 year old man who has gained followers through his controversial political views. He's a minor aristocrat and a member of the former German Royal House of Reuss one which included an actual Prince Heinrich XIII, but the monarchy was abolished when the Weimar Republic was founded in, 18, in 1918. Let's continue. Heinrich is among those who have been detained. 
Frank says. Others arrested include a Russian national identified as Vitalia B, who is accused of supporting the plan, according to a news release from the federal prosecutor's office. The plotters allegedly planned to replace Germany's government. The group rejected Germany's existing government as being tainted by the deep state operatives, according to the prosecutor's office. This is, direct, this is a QAnon direct conspiracy. This is referring to a conspiracy view that has found adherence in several countries, including the U.S. I would say primarily the U.S. Organizers started forming a leadership council and adopted a structure seeking to mirror a federal government, Frank said. Members had been named to operate as the new justice minister and in other roles, excuse me, with Heinrich, why, I don't know why my, my uh, I've got the hiccups so bad, I apologize, with Heinrich Tapp to be the future head of state, according to the prosecutor's office. The group has also has a military wing, stating that their plan includes the creation of a new military. In the past, some of the members of this military arm were active serving members of the German armed forces. Now, this part in particular is very interesting to me because here in America, we have a lot of these groups. Uh, some people call them paramilitaries. Here in the United States, they are most frequently referred to as militias. Militias have become increasingly popular on the far right in the United States. Uh, and most of these militias explicitly believe in, in overthrowing the government. Uh, to one degree or another. Some of them are more explicit, like, say, the Three Percenters. The Three Percenters is a is a uh, American far-right militia group that believes that it only takes 3% of the population to overthrow a government and, re and instate a new power. You, you start to see how their brain is working here. They believe that only a small, a small, heavily armed, very violent group of people can overtake the government and change the future. We have a lot of these. We have militias all across America have been written about extensively. There are so many of them, it's hard to believe. One of the, Another one of the most famous ones is a group called the Proud Boys. Now, the Proud Boys, they sell themselves as a social club, but they function as a militia. They uh, encourage uh, their people to be armed. They encourage their people to fight at demonstrations, specifically to go in and get in fights. They have hazing rituals that are specifically, uh, they're, the way you gain a promotion within the Proud Boys is by fighting a leftist or a liberal. You have to physically beat somebody up. So while they don't literally say, go over there and beat that guy up, if you want to get, if you want to be included in the fun, the fun, you got to go beat some people up. You got to go beat up some leftists specifically. Isn't that interesting? Arrests and raids were carried out all across Germany. Federal, state, and other police officers carried out 130 searches in a coordinated action spanning 11 German states, Frank said. He confirmed that some 3,000 officers were involved in the raids. The prosecutor's office said two arrests were made on foreign soil. One was made in Perugia, Italy, and the other in Kitzbühel, Austria. Describing the group's recent activities, the prosecutor's office alleged that in October, representatives of the conspiracy's military arm scouted existing military barracks in the states in the state of Hesse, Baden-Württemberg, and Bavaria as possible locations to house their own troops. In November, the office says members sought to recruit police officers in northern Germany to their cause. Another thing. In America... The police as an institution, and this is true to some degree in most countries, but in America, the police is a very, very far right organization. Uh, estimates uh, range for how many people within the, the police voted for Trump, but, uh, but reasonable and measured estimates uh, that are well documented extend, I've shown them on this stream before, we're not gonna bring it up here, but I want you to understand, please feel free to, to deep dive deeper into this if you so desire. Um, but, uh, but estimates have shown up to 70% of, uh, police forces in the United States were Trump voters specifically. Um, and, uh, as we know, we know where Trump is at right now. Uh, for those who maybe don't know, uh, Trump advocated for his followers just a couple of days ago to be prepared to, to dissolve the constitution if necessary to ensure Donald Trump gets back into power. I'm not kidding you. I can show you that. 
<laughs> literally right here. Hold on, let me just bring up the, uh, let me just bring up that photo real quick. Hold on, we got it on here? Let me... Let's just show what Donald Trump was advocating just the other day. Here we go, Donald Trump. With the revelation of massive and widespread fraud and deception and working closely with big tech companies, the DNC and the uh, 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 Democrat party, do you throw the presidential elections of 2020 out and declare the rightful winner, or do you have a new election? A massive fraud of this type and magnitude allows for the termination of all rules, regulations, and articles, even those found in the Constitution. Our great founders did not want and would not condone false and fraudulent elections. There's the first one, and the second one is right here. An unprecedented fraud requires an unprecedented cure. Okay. So a lot of cops in America support Donald Trump. And uh, a lot of cops also happen to be involved in a lot of militias because that's legal for them to participate in so long as the militia isn't violating certain laws. So there's a lot of overlap here between the same types of militias that are under, that attempted to recruit police officers in Germany uh, there's a lot of that here in America, and unfortunately, here, they have a lot more success because the laws are very different than in Germany. Let's continue. Germany's far right has been growing for years. For Germany, the high-profile confrontation with the far right easily eclipses an incident from 2017 when two German army officers were arrested and accused of plotting to assassinate the country's justice minister and a former president, along with other attacks. After that elaborate plot was uncovered, the defense ministry launched a wide-ranging probe to root out far-right extremism in the military. Then-German defense minister Ursula von der Leyen uh, uh, also urge senior officers to act when they see overt signs of far-right views. That effort also included a more comprehensive background checks for all new recruits, a step that was initially intended to block Islamist extremists from joining the military, but has now been retooled to help identify neo-Nazis. The armed service also reviewed nearly 300 reports of extreme far-right comments or behavior, including soldiers explicitly giving Nazi salutes. So first of all, now that we've gotten the uh, the, uh, the the basic story, you know we've we've now explored the what actually happened, which is a massive conspiracy was undercovered, uh, was uncovered, exposed, and arrests were made. Uh, they were unable to perpetrate their attacks, but they had already begun gathering arms. They had already begun explicitly writing out plans. They actually had on they had on paper on paper like digitally or otherwise an explicit structure for the government that they were going to overthrow with, which, as we have now seen, was a monarchist Reich government. Same same exact thing that Hitler attempted to do. Hitler's belief, of course, was that the uh, Weimar Republic was a fraudulent uh, republic that, was, uh, that, 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 we, that, that Germany needed to return to a greater time. Now, something that immediately pops out is, of course, the QAnon connection. And uh, America, okay, the United States of America, is what uh, many people would refer to as a cultural hegemon, okay? Some of you know, uh, <laughs> some of you know the, uh, uh, the, the term, sometimes some of you know hegemony, some of you are familiar with it. Uh, a hegemon is basically a, a state actor that is so influential that it can essentially without even having to explicitly say so, but often by explicitly saying so, can exert cultural and governmental power over basically everyone else nearby. In this case, the United States is one of a handful of global hegemons. The United States, like it or not, just churns out its, its own cultural viewpoints, its, uh, its products, its beliefs, and its actions all over the globe. Sometimes very explicitly, like when we go to war, like in Iraq, um, and, and other times by simply exerting influence. And when a cultural hegemon begins to output uh, its own internal decay, that can be very, very bad for a lot of people. And that's exactly what's been going on. Um, the United States has not been in a healthy place, arguably ever, but especially in recent memory. 
um, Donald Trump uh, came into power and immediately uh, began undoing what had previously been understood to be democratic uh, and protective norms. Uh, Donald Trump began to break down um, things like the separation of powers, which are, you know, largely considered to be a positive influence towards personal liberty, meaning no single person is in charge because there's multiple branches of government. Donald Trump completely erased the concept of separation of power. Donald Trump was so partisan in his um, in the way that he engaged with the just with the Justice Department. He was so partisan in the ways that he engaged with Congress. And also, on top of that, he would regularly completely ignore uh, the checks and balances that he was generally legally required to follow. He used tons and tons of loopholes to use executive orders, executive actions, which let, which basically is a very stupid American way of letting a president take control in emergency situations. Now, some of you very astute political readers out there will know that there are many political uh, writers such as Michel Foucault and others uh, who wrote about the state of exception. The state of exception being when uh, when sovereign powers like states or presidents uh, utilize emergency to dissolve their own rules. So like, uh, for example, uh, suspension of habeas corpus. Uh, suspension of habeas corpus or suspension of the right to a... Uh, 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 the right to, to a, a fair trial is used usually in times of war to say, we don't need to put on a trial for you. You're a war criminal. And if you look at this, it is a fundamental problem with states, which is that states are the ones who they, they are the ones who also enforce the rules that decide when they can break the rules that they created. Now, obviously, People make arguments for why they should be able to do this, but it nonetheless persists that, that this is a bit of a problem with state power. And even more so, you'll notice, as we discussed before, right-wingers who do not give a flying fuck about democratic norms, who do not give a flying fuck about, um, about balance of power, are very, very happy to create emergencies in which they can then justify uh, a suspension of usual practice. Uh, they can essentially say, well, we're you this is a state of exception. We exist in a state of exception. Sorry guys, it's the 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 immigrants are flooding in and they're endangering lives. Oh, the 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 groomers, that's one they love right now. The groomers are attacking our children. If we don't do something about it, you want to know what Donald Trump has been talking about recently? He, uh, we watched a speech here on this channel. Just recently, Donald Trump gave a speech and he's given multiple speeches now on this exact topic, talking about how he hopes that he can create a execution fast track for drug dealers. He wants to be able to execute drug dealers without a fair trial just because he personally hates drug dealers. I'm not kidding you. Hold on. Let me see. Hold on. Donald Trump in DC speech calls for a death penalty for convicted drug dealers. Former President Trump on Tuesday voiced support for imposing the death penalty as punishment for convicted drug dealers as part of a speech in which he laid out a series of drastic measures to curb crime. The penalty should be very, very severe. If you look at countries throughout the world, the ones that don't have a drug problem are the ones that institute a very quick trial, death penalty, a very quick trial, death penalty sentence for drug dealers. It sounds horrible, doesn't it? But you know what? That's the ones that don't have any problem. It doesn't take 15 years in court. It goes quickly and you should absolutely execute a drug dealer and you'll save 500 lives. It's terrible to say, but you take a look at every country that doesn't have a problem and they have a very strong death penalty for people that sell drugs. Now, of course, this is false. The countries that have the least problems with drugs are countries like Portugal, which have introduced education and medical care for those with addiction. Those are the countries that actually uh, manage to reduce drug rates. What other countries do is they falsely, uh, they drive drug use into, into the dark, and then they say, well, I don't see the drug users because they're hiding. They're in hiding or they're dead. 
and then they say, oh, it must mean there's no drug problem. But in truth, their entire their entire citizenship is using drugs all the time, but nobody will ever talk about it, and they just die from overdose, and nobody knows because they won't go to the hospital because they're afraid of getting the death penalty. So, yeah. So, all of this is to point out the fact that... Um, all of these right-wing groups, all these disparate right-wing groups all over the world uh, have become particularly interested in finding ways to circumvent uh, existing democratic norms as a part of a rapid, rapid acceleration in their rhetoric and their practices. And America, of course, is outputting, outputting this to the rest of the world. It's no accident that this coup attempt in Germany was fueled by QAnoners. QAnon being one of the most rampant conspiracy theories to ever uh, spread on the internet and also one of the most malicious. QAnon was promoted from the highest offices. Donald Trump and his loyalists promoted QAnon from the presidential White House. Despite the fact that they were in charge of the White House, they still promoted the idea that there was a secret a uh, cabal of people pulling the strings. And of course, this has spread out into the entire world. I think it's really important that we pay attention to this stuff. And also, I want you all to understand why I think it's so important for those of us here in America to fight back against the right wing as hard as we possibly can here. Because America is a hegemon. And whether you like it or not, this country dumps out hatred. When hate takes control in America, which it does, unfortunately, frequently, because of the way that our government and our, our society is structured, it hurts the rest of the world. Our actions here, our willingness to fight here, has rippling effects all across the world because we exist in one of a handful of empires. You could argue that there is an empire in Russia you could argue that there is an empire in China, and you can argue that there is an empire in the United States. These are the re the, the remaining empires in the world. S uh, state actors of such incredible power that they are able to wield weapons that could destroy the entire planet, and additionally, that every action they take affects every other nation of the world, like it or not. And the reason why I'm making, like I said, the reason why I'm making such a big deal about this is because I want American viewers, my American viewers, and uh, to really think about that, to recognize that, yes, we live in the heart of empire. And yes, what we choose to do, how we choose to fight will save lives or could save lives, depending on how we choose, worldwide. That... Uh, that us, if, if we had been able to somehow deal with QAnon, this would have never happened in Germany. Or at least it wouldn't have happened this quick and this widespread. Because it's, there's no way that you can argue with the fact that the members that have been arrested are all QAnoners. There's no way you can grapple with that without concluding that America has done some serious harm. That the conspiracy theories spread by our political actors by our state heads of state like Donald Trump are, is doing global harm. Zalu 2 says, unironically, the Star Wars prequels and, and Andor are pretty good at depicting the process by which the far right gains power. Yes, they actually are. Um, especially the, uh, <laughs> the prequels have a lot of issues, as we know. But the prequels um, did, it, they, they, if you'll notice, I, I didn't even make this connection immediately, but it's obviously there. They talk about the state of exception. If you remember your Star Wars prequel lore, you remember that Palpatine seizes power uh, after asking for a temporary, uh, a temporary exception to the rules of governance. That he convinces them that the uh, the clone, the, the 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 droid army is so dangerous that they need to give power to a single guy so that they can go to war and defeat the uh, the droids. That is the literal storyline of the prequels. It was explicitly talking about how uh, a, a democratic system, a seemingly functioning democratic system can be twisted like that 
by manipulating panic, by manipulating fear and hatred to create a state of exception. So this is how liberty dies with thunderous applause? Yes. Yes, it does. Uh, th there's, there's, there's a couple of things I talk about on this channel, probably ad nauseum. It probably drives some of my viewers a little bit crazy, which is I talk about moral panics and I talk about conspiracism all the time. Conspiracism is, uh, as a, as a, as a phenomena, is a way in which people erode their ability to apply skepticism, erode their ability to apply investigation and take advantage of, uh, of thought terminating cliches in order to encourage people into usually far right ideologies. It's no, it's no accident, uh, that, uh, you know, that, that Hitler had his big lie and that, excuse me, and that Donald Trump now has his big lie. Even though Donald Trump's claims of election fraud are completely made up. They are so debunked, it's not even funny. They have been debunked by court after court after court, by every single in independent investigator that digs into them of any merit. Anybody who actually tries to get their hands on truth, on actual evidence of this so-called fraud, only comes up with nothing. And that's not because, by the way, Democracy has no flaws. It does. Uh, I talk about this very frequently as well. American democracy is deeply, deeply flawed. Just not in the way that Donald Trump is alleging. The way that Donald Trump is alleging is that there's no point to any of it, that all of it is, all of it is stolen, and that the only way that you're going to get your Christian nation, the only way you're going to protect your Christian kids is if you go out and dissolve the Constitution. That's conspiracism. That is rampant conspiracism. And the other thing I talk about all the time that I just mentioned before is moral panics. Moral panics are used to, moral panics are the result of rampant conspiracism. The conspiracies get out of control and people begin to panic. They start to freak out. Oh my God, there is a, there's a, a secret pedophile ring everywhere in the pizza shop. There's a secret pedophile ring in my local bakery. There's a secret pedophile ring in the White House. There's a secret pedophile ring everywhere. And in, they will literally, these people will literally ignore actual proven examples of pedophile rings. Like for example, Jeffrey Epstein and uh, and um, Ghislaine Maxwell and Donald Trump, who was very close friends with, spent a lot of time on the pedophile island himself, was recorded on the flights with Jeffrey Epstein multiple times. They will literally ignore the actual evidence that exists, the hard, proven, accessible for anyone to see evidence that exists in the name of, of participating in a moral panic. It's bad. And these moral panics lead to people shutting off their faculties for reason and jumping on board with raw authoritarianism. And of course, do I need to tell where that goes? Do I need to talk about Franco's Spain and the purges and the killings and the extrajudicial, uh, extrajudicial disappearings? Do I need to talk about Mussolini's Italy and the killings and the purges and the extrajudicial uh, disappearings? Do I need to talk about Stalin's Russia? Do I need to talk about Hitler's Germany? Do I need to talk about, uh, 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 how many examples do we need to point to? These ideologies are toxic. They lead to mass death. They lead to miserable, miserable societies. And they are founded from the top to the bottom on lies, on manipulating emotions, on turning off people's brains, and more importantly, turning off people's hearts. So that's all I have to say about Germany at this particular moment. Um, Germany just had a, just busted like I said, I just want to summarize here for the end. Germany busted a nationwide conspiracy. And we don't know yet how many people were involved in it. We don't know yet how many uh, people were ready to go storm the capital in Germany. What we do know is what's happened elsewhere and what successful ones look like. They look like January 6th, where innocent people die and... Uh, and uh, a country spirals into more radicalism. Can you imagine how many people would have died if they succeeded? Let's just imagine that somebody didn't catch them. 
let's let's imagine a world in which this coup attempt didn't get caught until after they were already attacking. Even if they failed to take over the government, which they probably would have to be fair, even if they failed, the amount of injuries, death, and pointless destruction, not to mention of that of the people who were fooled into following it, would have been catastrophic.